Those of were course. amazing lessons. Hopefully, find people find it valuable. But um, now, let's say, how did you get into photography, and what made you kind of explore that next? Because now you're in a new country, right? You're in America, uh -huh. new partner. <laughs> <laughs> what made you look into photography? Wow, um, this is a story. Okay. Um, look, everything happening in life guides you to other new situation. Okay. Yeah. When I was a personal trainer, I used a photograph the photography as a tool with my clients or my students because beca because they were most of them were bodybuilders or people who wants to lose weight or looks beautiful, handsome, but they go to the gym every day, train so hard during the diet and they don't feel or they don't see any change. So we need a strategy. Okay guys, what we have to do is take some pictures every month. Some pictures in front, the back, the sides, and we can compare. And what's very, very good because they could see, okay, in January I had this uh, weight and I looked like this. But now February, March, June, uh, I can see the changes. Because they see themselves in the mirror every day, they can see the changes. This is like when you go outside and somebody tell you, "Oh, you lose weight. Good for you." So, oh yeah, oh nice, good. When you see the pictures, you have perspective. All different angles. Different of angles. Your, oh. Yes, exactly. And something that happens one day in my office and I had a client. She came for a psychologist treatment. And the first thing that one of the first things that she said is, I don't understand my husband. Why you don't understand your husband? Because he's so stupid, he's she said many bad things about him. But at the end he was uh, the worst man, the stupid man. Why? Because she says, he says, sorry, he says that he likes me, that he feels... Uh, <laughs> he that, said he likes her and she... <laughs> yeah, that he feels excitement because of me. The, he said, what is, the, what is the problem? And she said, look at look me. Look at me, why? No, look at me. Said, oh my goodness. She didn't see How? herself as... Nobody would like somebody like me. So, wow. You can think that maybe she was an ugly woman or something, but she wasn't. And we have to start about that, uh, to work about that and her own concept, you know? Uh, it was a little complicated, but one of the tools that we use was photography. One of the things that I explained to her is the what's very difficult for her to see her in different angles because she sees herself in the mirror. It's just one plane, uh, it's two dimensions. Yeah, but I can see you in this way. Maybe I like your profile, maybe your profile is nice, or maybe this angle or this other one. You, you never see your, your back, or you never see how beautiful is your bum, you know? many aspects and what what we tried um, she used the uh, her camera to see different angles of herself and at the end she takes some professional pictures looking in a good way try to expressing herself and was very effective incredible was very effective Really? That's amazing. She saw herself differently. Yes. She could see like what other people see, which she never saw. Exactly. <laughs> she connects with her femininity. Femininity? Mm -hmm. Yes, femininity. Mm -hmm. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. And what's really nice and give me another perspective for myself. Oh, you saw how it affected her, how she saw herself differently. How much uh, photography could be in a therapy? Oh. Yeah, and I like photography. I used to go outside in Barcelona to do um, street photography. And 
because this therapy that I have with this woman, I ended up doing boudoir photography. I'm starting in Barcelona and I did it here too. Yeah. Trying to offering to women the opportunity to connect with themselves, mm -hmm. with this part. Um, but it's a, a conflict that I have because it's some people trying to do boudoir Use photography. For something bad? Yeah, because they confuse different terms like nudity, sexuality, uh, but this is not the idea of boudoir. Boudoir is a kind of photography of women for women. Not a, not, it's not a photography for men. Mm -hmm. This is Playboy. Mm -hmm. This is very different. What I want is that this woman could see herself beauty, sensual, not the sexy part. This is another part of photography. This is glamour photography. Yeah? You can go to nudity. Okay. Actually, we can have nudity in, in boudoir, but I don't have to show parts. Mm. It's not necessary. Mm. I don't understand why some photographers take the picture of the bump directly with the camera <laughs> in front. Of, no, why you have to do that? You are using women in the same way the industry uses women for sell cars, mm. perfumes, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Using the sexual area. Mm. So you saw the boudoir was making used in a negative way, and you didn't like that. Yeah, I don't like that, and. I think that we have a lot of things to do in this way, yeah? The women can enjoy this themselves and use it like... Like in a tasteful way, it can be like in a tasteful way just for yourself to exactly. enjoy yourself mm -hmm. but in, a, in a tasteful way. Yeah. <laughs> and when I moved here to America, what I discovered is that this is the country um, who moves about license. You need license for everything mm, so you couldn't do what you were doing before the, the, exactly. the psychology the, the therapy therapist, none nothing, of that was acceptable that. here exactly because i have, have to license. start from zero studying everything it was like i don't want to do that i want to to flow and this is something that i thought many years ago i want to do what i like what I really enjoy, and so I love photography. I think that I can do something with it, with it. and I can use therapy in photography. Yes, yeah, actually, you can. Yeah, <laughs> and this is what I did with uh, boudoir. In some way, now that I'm working in um, wedding photography, events, events photography, photography, I use it. I use it because sometimes I have uh, couples doing the um, photo shoot. Photo shoot, yes. We do um, pre-weddings, okay. and I, I need to recognize how they are. Like their personality? Personality, exactly. I could say, okay, this person is like fire, wood, earth, or metal, whatever, and this person is like this. That's why they have this interaction. They like to do these kind of things, activities. If, if I have people, who likes to be extrovert, I can ask them for jump, to scream, oh. to, to do things like that, to laugh very loud. But if they are more like introvert, introvert, I can ask for this kind of things. I have to change my way to work. I need to adapt. That, that's the way that I use my knowledge in photography right now. That's so amazing. It's like you were saying before, every step of your life was kind of like you put it all together and it yes. helps you in the next life. Now you can use that in photography because you have the knowledge of the human behavior, mm -hmm. how it works and what would be like the best way to get it out of the person, right? You try and take a picture of the couple, you know the best way to make them feel comfortable, make them feel alive or whatever they want to do. Exactly. Oh, so that's how you got into it. Okay, okay. So what would you say is, um, so now you do event photography and wedding photography. Right now, mm -hmm. those are mostly See, your yeah, two amazing areas, which I have seen, I can tell you, really good. 
because you know you were doing a lot of the events at the salsa school you were doing a lot of those photos there are some amazing photos we love all your photos always thank you so much <laughs> I'm so happy. that's so true we do we do you capture like i feel like especially in dance you capture like the movement you capture the joy you capture like it's like you can feel what they're feeling in your photo it's not like you're just like okay just stand there no it's yeah, like <laughs> yeah i try to avoid that <laughs> yeah it's never just in there no <laughs> it's like you can feel the entire experience that they're experiencing through your photo so i definitely like how you choose to take the photos at the events especially Thank the you. dance ones yeah <laughs> um so what would you say in your current role now that you're in photography what would you say is one misconception about photography like that you wish people would understand um more misconception in photography um maybe th people some people think that um the photography is just to expose yourself mm. you know in the ego way no, <laughs> ego standard right. yeah <laughs> I no? think that, mm, it's not just like that. Obviously, it's people using using it in that way, but it's not just that. What? Yeah, what? Ph photography is something more. Photography is about story. Uh, photography is is about uh, to preserve moments. When we made this transition to being a, a, a primes to to human beings. We draw, we tell stories in, in stones, you know, because people need to, they need to remember that moment or they need to count what they have or they want to teach future generations mm. about what they do or the way they, they live or what, what was important for them. And it's the same thing now. When you have a wedding, what you want is to tell the story to your kids. These pictures, um. these pictures are for them. It's not for you in reality. You, because you can see the pictures, oh okay, yeah, it's so nice. But at the end, it's a story, you, it's a story that, that you, you want, want to share. tell, you want to show. Exactly. I like that. That's a good way to look at it. Photography at the end is, um, your legacy. Mm. This is something very important for us. You want to remember how do you look when you were 60, 20, 30? Yes. Yeah? Your yes. kids when they born. When they were born? Yes. Yeah, exactly. When they had five years, when they made that speech, whatever. You want to remember these things. And Photography is very related with storytelling. Mm -hmm. We love stories. Yes, it's always fascinating. <laughs> yes, it's fascinating. <laughs> it's fascinating, okay. And we love to use our imagination. When you see a picture, you imagine that moment. It comes to your mind, yeah? And immediately you feel what you feel in that moment. You can hear the voices around. You can hear the music. You, you can smell everything is in your mind. Yeah? And you can tell me, oh yes, but in video, you have that. Yes and no, because video depends on the editing or the person who edit, show you. Video guides you in emotions. It's in the movie. The movie guides you with music. If, um, if I edit my video, with um, fast transitions it's like moving excited if i do it slow with slow music romantic you have another sensation in reality what i do is manipulate you and your perspective change but when you see the picture you have some memories and you imagine in the way that you want to imagine maybe you imagine one thing and imagine other but it's pleasant for me yeah and you show your kids and they could imagine oh how beautiful was my mother I don't want to say the video is not important because it is have beautiful areas it's so nice it's very
complementary photography and video but always paints and pictures have something magical of that I think it's so nice I like that I like that thanks for sharing yeah is that is that basically why you think photography is important is because of all the um, things you just mentioned yes I think photography is so important because allow us to document our lives yeah it's not just look at me oh i look cute today it's not like that it's mm -hmm. more of like you said it's the whole journey it's exactly. that it's the experience of it and it's it's important how it is taken also like that's why i like i said before the skill that you have i feel the skill that you have is really good to capture um whatever it is that they theme for the event is or the person the couples um thing is i feel like you're really good at um <laughs> just kind of you set the theme and then you kind of bring it out of them i think like you're you're really good at it um so I definitely um appreciate that okay thank you for sharing no, um thank you so much. Uh, the other question i would say is um because you are now um working with people right where most of your life you have been working with people um how has that helped you in your current job in photography because a lot of times you you don't know who you're working with you don't know who the client is so uh what would you say is like a good way to um see if you know maybe they have like um a bad uh integrity or like they're like lying like would you look at their body language would you look at their like uh what how do you kind of pick and choose who you work with and who you're like no nah, i don't want to work with this person because they're going to be trouble for me <laughs> yeah um it's very tricky to do that but i have to say that i use my my knowledge for that one of the th the things that i learned was uh nlp okay and another thing was um facial recognize oh like the different expressions of the exactly. person's face okay yeah. and it's helped really yeah because you can see different changes when the people say things you can see it but one of the most important thing is to see the behaviors in different moments For example, I always think that you can understand a person and see how this person is when they play. Really? When they play? Tell me more. When somebody's playing, if they are correct and respect the rules of the game, uh, or they try to cheat. Ah. Yeah. If they do that, there is very possible that they act in a similar way in their own life hmm? mm. the way that somebody treat uh, another person for example you go to a dinner and this person is mean with the waiter but he can spend with you one day similar behavior mm. yeah because the people relax in that moment and they let out go out the what they really are yeah and the other thing is they need to to hear what they say yes yeah um socrates says talk i want to know you yeah i see you but now i want I want to know you. Talk. Because of the way that you you can see what is inside. Somebody can lie to you, but it's difficult they they can do that all the time. You have to see in which areas they are um incongruent. Yeah? Uh somebody that I know one day told me that she likes to train her dog with positive reinforcement reinforcement okay yeah okay but she scream at the dog all oh. the time what <laughs> that's not positive reinforcement 
<laughs> oh, so you're like, let me see what you mean by that talk, right? And, uh, <laughs> and can, you can see. In this moment, she was telling me something. Okay, but she acts in a different way. You have to see what she's, yes. what the person said. Actions. What, the actions. The way they act. Does it match? Mix. Yeah. Uh, it's incongruent. It's congruent. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, thanks for sharing. So what would you say is your favorite part about doing what you'd like working at events, working at photography for weddings? What would you say is your favorite, favorite part about doing that? I think to have contact with people. Is ah, very the human interaction, yes. you get to meet new people, you get to I like, I really like to have friends. I. I'm very um, into people, you know, and I like to create, to find ah. different situations that makes me think how to resolve this problem, how to take this picture, the, I don't have enough light, what I can do, all these things that challenge me, I like it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like it's like a creative outlet and you get to interact with people and they're all so different. You always have different personalities, different kind of humans. You have to kind of see how to approach them. Yeah, this <laughs> is lovely. And I, I like to capture natural moments. I know that as a photographer, we always said the same. I capture your real moments. But I don't know how to explain this. I wait for something real mm. more than the people they're posing sometimes they they look at me with the camera and they go like ah. <laughs> uh, okay i take the picture but i'm going around catching these moments i really like to do that that's super awesome but you just remind me of another question i was going to ask you so i have a co-worker right now in uh in manhattan and this lady has never done a photo shoot for herself because she is very shy and she's very scared okay and she always has a dream of what it would be like to you know have photos but she's like super shy and she's like uh like she's just like scared to do it so what would you say to somebody like that? What advice, like what would be like the words that we would say to somebody like that to encourage them to give it a shot? What is the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> if you don't like the pictures, you can delete it. Ooh, that's a good Because one. the problem, I think, maybe I'm wrong, I, I don't know, is that we feel insecure with pictures because we don't have a good idea about us. But That's probably what it yeah. is. She's I'm, assuming I'm, that she's not going to look good. <laughs> so she's like, I'm so not even going to try. <laughs> because I don't feel that I look good in front of the gorgeous, mirror. She's gorgeous, by the way. She's gorgeous. <laughs> the beauty, beauty is something uh, very, very difficult because what is beauty? Yeah, uh, somebody could tell me, man, you're so handsome. And somebody could tell me, you're so ugly. You know, compare with who? You know? <laughs> Everyone is different. Yeah, <laughs> and, and beauty is about... Um, oh. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? It's like, it's who is like... Uh, no, yeah. yeah, and beauty is basically symmetry. Mm. Yeah? And beauty change the concept of beauty change through the years yes yeah in the middle evil beauty was different than now yeah the, the beauty uh, women there was some yes yeah, yeah, like, here yes. some weight you know yes now well some in some point was very skinny, skinny is more considered yeah exactly yeah the jawline very straight things like that Okay, this consider like beautiful. Now, but... Yeah? But the most important thing is, how do you feel about yourself? Mm. The idea of the pictures is, this picture is for yourself. So yeah. maybe because she doesn't see that in her, she's scared because she's assuming it's gonna look bad. 
But if she actually tries, like you said, what's the worst that could happen? If she actually tries, she might see something different. <laughs> the, and the thing is, uh, he's thinking ahead. in the future. Ahead. Yes, ahead. Yeah. This picture is not just for me because my husband, partner, whatever, will see the pictures. My mother, my friends, and maybe they don't like it. Ah. Mm -hmm. They will judge me. They will say that I look so bad. All these things in, in their mind. This is the problem. Mm. So, so I like the suggestion that you said, like, what's the worst that can happen and let them kind of just take the shot and kind of just try it once just to see for themselves what it really is because like one of the ways i think some people say to overcome fear is just to do it right so do it <laughs> and then see <laughs> yeah and photography is tricky um this is happened with my wife mm -hmm. i i hope the she don't kill me for this <laughs> <laughs> don't um, kill him for this <laughs> one day one day uh we take some pictures i don't remember exactly what happened but what she wasn't feeling very good with the result. Mm -hmm. And something that I could see, this was a long time ago, mm -hmm. and something that I could see, I can see in that moment, is the angle of the lens that I was using. I was using a zoom lens. And she said, I don't feel very well with this picture. I, it doesn't represent myself. Hmm. Well, what happened is that depends of the lens that you use, the angle of the lens creates distortions. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's why if you take your cell phone and you put your cell phone very close to you, it's a different your nose looks like this, yeah. giant. What's up with that? <laughs> and this, like that, yeah. it's horrible. That's why a lot of people take selfies like this. Up, oh. because it makes this part straight, straight. looks better, and they look, if you want to look, what is your good angle? The best, uh, yeah, the, the the best angle. angle yeah. Yes, you have to see your pictures. You look for your selfies. Oh, it's always here. This is your, this is the light, your angle that you like more. <laughs> That's such a good tip. It's so yeah. simple, but it's such a good tip. Yeah, and this is what I will say to your friend. You need a professional who knows what to do and take the pictures who represents you mm. yeah because maybe you take your camera oh. One second. We're <laughs> we have somebody is looking by, for the, <laughs> by the helicopter <laughs> taking a one second break <laughs> is it okay. what happened in new york new york is helicopters yeah <laughs> okay okay sorry yeah um she could take the the own camera maybe she had bad experiences because had pictures not very professional not very good mm, so she needs like a good professional um, that would know how to put the right angle how to get the right pose how to get her personality yeah because uh, take a good picture is not just press a button usually people think about that it's like oh let's just take a picture it's you come to my wedding and just Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> it's not just like that. Yes, and I just remembered a little off topic, but you mentioned that you were in Colombia recently, right? Yeah. For um, a workshop. workshop. Yeah. What were some of the things that you uh, found really useful that you learned there about photography? Basically, um, well, I think two parts. One is a um, business aspect, but... Yeah. The way that we communicate with clients was, was important, but in the directly with photography, yeah. the light. It's just going to the base, it's the light. How we can transform areas or sets using light and colors. Ooh, we can transform the reality in photography without using uh, big processing now is very trading the AI 
you know, the Photoshop and all these things. Everybody's crazy with that. But you can do very good things using light in a very good way, with a purpose. Hmm? That's why um, being a photographer, a professional photographer, is not just to press the button. You need to know about the properties of the light, the properties of the lenses, mm. the um, aberrations, um, the distance. It's a lot of things. Composition. I think this is very important. And, I, and for me, it was very important, that, that part of the light. Yeah, being yeah. The, the no, base. no. I remember just you were saying that you came back from Colombia. I was like, oh my God, Medellin, Colombia. It sounds like super awesome. That's, that's a good place to have like a photography I, I did, workshop. I didn't dance. No dancing? No. <laughs> no. Now I got to wake up for it. We'll do dancing here. <laughs> it's a good dancer, by the way. You're oh, a good dancer. He's a really good dancer because we see you <laughs> dance at the socials sometimes. <laughs> well, I dance all my life. <laughs> really? Wait, when did you start dancing? When I was, well, with the process of dancing, since I was a little kid, watching my mother, my aunt dancing, all the people around me. But I started to dance when I was 10 years old. Really? Yeah, in the streets. Oh, you learned on the streets? With so you really know brother. how to move. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Freely, and you yeah, can feel yeah, the music. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a structure. Like yeah, a, and then in Barcelona, I, uh, I learned a rhythm called Zouk. Oh, I've heard of Zouk. It's fun, yeah. right? Yes. You love that it's one? lovely. Which one do you like more, salsa, bachata, or Zouk? Or which one do you like more? Which one's your favorite? All of them. All of them? <laughs> like, I'll take it all? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, no discrimination. No discrimination? <laughs> Dance is good. All yeah. dance is good. As long as you enjoy it. It's a good therapy. Isn't it like therapy? It's basically yeah. like therapy. It's one of the, I consider that one of the best way to meditate. It's therapy, meditation, it's, but, but you would use it for meditation? A little bit, yes. Why? Okay, because meditate, meditation is being in the present. Yeah, you have to be here, present. Exactly. When you dance, you can't think in your problems. Because you love your... You have to look at your steps, look uh -huh. at your arm. You have to think, think in what to move to, and create the connection that you are in the present. Oh, it does force you to pay attention to now. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> I agree with that. It can be really, Yeah, sometimes really I try to meditate and, uh, and my mind is... <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. But dancing is there, always there. I agree with that. I never found myself thinking in my problems, dancing and thinking in my problems. I can't. Yeah, you can't. It's either one or the other. Either you're dancing or you're thinking. Exactly. <laughs> you don't then to. maybe you stop and, and you go, come back to your problems. But at least if the song is four minutes, you were meditating four minutes. <laughs> That's so awesome. Hold on. So, so I have some some fun questions. Oh my Really goodness. fun questions. This is like a little question uh, card. Okay. We just like randomly like pick a few questions. I'm scared. Are you are you ready? Are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> it's simple. It's simple. It's like everyday questions. We just like we just like pick which oh one we goodness. like. Which one we like? And then all right, all right. We'll start. We we'll start with the first one. It's like a fun little ending. Okay. Questions. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a card from a lady that is a, a journalist, a reporter. So uh -huh. all her life she was interviewing people. Okay. So she came up with this like fun game where nice. you kind of like, yeah, you kind of pick questions to make it interesting to get to know somebody. Okay. It's wow. like that. I was like, I want to play that. <laughs> okay. So this one, out of all the extraordinary people that you have encountered, who made the biggest, the largest impact in your life or left like a biggest memory in your life out of all the interesting people you have encountered <laughs> i have to pick, pick one. one or you can do two if you want to do two you can do two or, or top three it's okay Big impact in my life yeah it could be a parents too it doesn't have to be like i have i would pick kim kim, kim you see, one of your mom. teachers yeah why? Because 
he's a strong man. Mm -hmm. He's um, like very stoic. Ah, okay. And he goes into um, depression. Oh, really? Yes. And I, I met him when he was in the depression. And even being in a really bad situation, he just built himself again. Oh, wow. And he teach me a lot. He, he guide me. I wow. admire him so much. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you. Okay, the next one. I think we already talked about what's the most difficult part about what you do for a living. Did we talk about that? What's the most difficult part about what you do for a living? Like right now, the photography. Is there like a difficult, challenging part about it? Is it the people? <laughs> is it the, right is now it the in people? photography? What, <laughs> what is the difficult part in photography? Yeah. I think the sometimes the commercial area is difficult. Mm -hmm. All this part and the um, numbers and all these things because I'm not a, okay. very much okay yeah that part yeah. is a challenge that's not creative that's not like you can't use the same talents yeah it's like a different I love uh, to take the picture and create you know but all these uh, areas are very difficult for me even the social media is difficult for me really yeah but it's a creative yes but I don't know why uh, sometimes to think what to create in social media, uh, how to put it there, I don't know. Why? Yeah, yeah, it's a no different skill set. It's a little bit of a different skill set. It yeah. has their own rules, it has their own like algorithm, it has their own like hashtags. Like, it's, it's a little bit of a I a think skill. the other part is the, because I'm so judgy with myself. Oh, really? You mm. criticize yourself? <laughs> yeah, I want to do things in a good way. Um, I have a tip for that. You want me to share a tip for that? Because course. I used to be like that. I was mm. like, if it's not perfect, I'm not releasing it, right? So the rule is, my, my, my uh, co-worker, my, my boss would tell me, if it's 75% good, you can post it. Because it's never going to be 100. <laughs> yes. 75%, go for it. <laughs> This is what I have to do. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be spending hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes spend a lot of time in a small thing. Yeah. In a picture, the editing something. And it really doesn't matter. Oh it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because if 75% good, go for it. That's what I had to do. Otherwise, I would just get stuck. And this way, I just like go. <laughs> well, thank so you. There you go. A little we'll tip. do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. What is the biggest sacrifice that you had to make um, on your journey to achieving whatever you wanted to achieve? Uh, to say goodbye to my family. Oh, they're in Colombia or they? When, when we were in Colombia and we moved. And um, yeah, this is, was a big sacrifice. Mm. And starting in a new country was difficult was difficult for me, very, very much, uh, hard yeah. situations, I think. Was. Okay, okay. Yeah, that can be very challenging, obviously, when you have to pick, you know, your dream or, yeah, it's, it's a challenging kind yeah. of thing, but it comes with the, with the journey, right? That's the journey of life. It's got the ups and downs. It's never straight, right? It's yes. never, everything never. is perfect and peachy. That's not life. No, it would be boring. <laughs> It would be boring, yeah. Without the ups and downs, it would be boring. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's life. Okay. Um, what is the title for this season of your life right now? What would you say is the title of this season of your life right now? That's a good question. <laughs> if you... I don't know if it's correct to say yeah, that. Yeah. But if I have to say it, the first thing that comes to my yeah. mind is happiness. Oh. Uh, that's amazing because the journey that you have had, the ups and downs that you have had to call this finally a yeah. happy moment, a happy um, chapter in your life. That's amazing. Yeah, it comes to my mind like big letters like this. Uh, <laughs> Happiness like this. That's amazing. Yeah. Does it have a lot to do with the partner who's sitting right there? For sure. <laughs> Definitely a lot to do with the partner right there. And, and the way that I feel with myself too. It's like this combination. 
is nice. You have come to a different level of understanding yourself, of yeah. knowing yourself, of yeah. loving yourself, respecting it's, it's yourself. Every, every day is something new that I learn from myself. Yesterday I have a beautiful conversation with her. Yeah, because I have a lot of insecurities, and I know. I, I don't know, yesterday talking with her, some things that I could understand and I feel that something changed. And this is nice to feel that. That makes me happy. Aww. It's simple, but it's like that. I love that answer. <laughs> but that's basically, a lot of the times people think like to be happy in life, you have to have big things, boat, cars, whatever. But the happiness in life is really not from things it's not from money it's not from you know no it's from a state of mind uh, i have a big problem with that that's why i said i don't know if it's correct to say that it's because we we are confused with happiness and contempt okay you can be happy you can enjoy you can, you can have a happy life and have problems yeah, I can have a discussion with a friend, but my life in general is happy. But if I think that because I feel good in specific moments, this is the moment that I'm happy, I'm wrong. I bought a new car, now I'm content, not happy, content because that. And I go outside and somebody crashed my car, I'm sad again, oh, what happened? Yeah, and depend of the weather to be happy or not, you know? Isn't but that's it? not how it should be. <laughs> I don't want to be like that. You don't want to depend on anything outside of you to yes. give you happiness. I don't want to say that I'm 100% in that. No, because I'm not. Uh, but this is, the, this is my goal. I like that, I like that. Yeah, it sounds like you're getting there like the way you just described where you find happiness in your current life, that's, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Okay, thank you for sharing. Mm, I don't know if we want to go with this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, me, let me prepare, let me prepare. More vodka. <laughs> okay. What is your earliest memory or example of success and how did that impact you? So I guess, what did you think before success was and what do you think now success is? I think that's what they're saying. Because, you know, we all like grow up thinking success is one thing, but then you live life and you're like, that's not success. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, when I was little, uh, I was thinking uh, the success, successful was being like millionaire, mm -hmm. having cars and things like that, you know? and go out with models. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what most All these people stupid assume. things. Yeah. yeah. But uh, being in Barcelona, I, I could understand the success for me was uh, doing or being in the state that I want to be. Ah, yeah. If I have a goal okay. and I achieve this goal, I'm successful. Okay. Yeah. If it's not, I'm not successful. Okay. And I plan my life the way that I want to have my life, the way that I want to work, and I feel really, really in that state, that is very successful, because I have my my office in the apartment that I want, the big one with my office there, living in the, in, in the center of the city, having the beach like 15 minutes ago, traveling, I feel very good. Okay. Yeah. And then I thought the most important thing in this is that I'm doing what I really want to do. I'm working in the way that I want to work and the way that I feel with myself. I feel comfortable doing this. I feel that I know what I do and I feel that I can share with people. That makes me feel that way. 
Yeah, I think the important thing is how do you feel every day of your life, right? Yep. How does success, how do you feel every day of your life? Like if you're feeling miserable, but you have stuff, is that really a success, right? <laughs> and now what makes me feel success, success or success, su success yeah. is that I could have a conversations with my wife. Oh, look at that. I know, I really know this sounds cheesy and silly and whatever you want to say, but I really understand how important is that. Why? It's my daily life. It's the person who lives with me and I want to live my life with her. You want to spend time with yes, the person who is exactly. most important to you. And this communication, again, is very important. And I could do it. In the past, I was the kind of guy difficult to have a conversation. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No way. What do you mean? Oh, ego. Oh, you mm. were like... Ah, how would you say that? Maybe I had ideas difficult to change. And yeah, was, for me it was like difficult to, to evolve, to transform. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very fixed in something. What do you think made you be open to shifting that personality? Was it like life experiences? Yeah, life. Life was like, life like that. you better yeah. change <laughs> or that's not gonna work. <laughs> what I told you, sometimes life is, Telling me, man, you have to go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the pillow fell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no, it's okay. You can yeah, stay can here. Okay. So speaking of that, the next question is: When do you know for sure? Did everything change? Mm. That's right, nothing stays the same. No. Even if you think you're, you're comfortable in this situation, is it going to be like this all the time? No. <laughs> Everything changed. This is the natural way. This is nature. But we don't want the things to change. We say that we want. That mm -hmm. isn't true. Yeah? We want the country moves in the traditional way and we want to respect traditions but traditions change and the way to think change it's not the same thing this society a hundred years ago than now and we said things like oh because I'm always like this no I'm not the same man than 20 years ago this guy is dead I'm another one I'm this one right now and the possibility that I'm completely wrong is high and maybe tomorrow on 10 years or 5 years you say oh you know I changed my mind Yes, it's possible. Correct? It's definitely possible. Okay. <laughs> and it's fine, because <laughs> that's the part of growth. Yeah. So I like that answer. So basically, the only thing you know for sure is that everything changes. Nothing stays the same. <laughs> it changes. Just rest? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's a good answer. That's a good answer. OK, we'll do like three more questions. And okay. then we'll go, because we're not going to do More vodka. <laughs> I know, Jim, you said that. <laughs> OK, let me, pick, let me pick some good ones, because we only got three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <really>? so <laughs> this face. <laughs> so this one <laughs> um, is about like your whole life, right? Okay. A mistake that you made along the way that you would really like to save other people from making. I think they opened my mouth too quick too much <laughs> learn to pause <laughs> listen first <laughs> yeah yeah 
Yeah, because sometimes they seem like, oh my god. Like, why did I say all this? Yeah. I got me in trouble. <laughs> That's funny because my one of my bosses, uh, well, trick, uh, one of the uh, advices he always gives in negotiations, he's like, you always let the other person talk first. You never start like, this is my demands, this is what I, no, you listen first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's basically what you're saying. Yeah, actually the, the Stoics, the Stoics says that we have two ears and just one mouth. Oh, so listen more before you speak. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, thank you. And I'll skip that one. <laughs> I was gonna pick like really good one, which one, which one uh, I really like, and then we will pick. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with. Ooh, that's a fun question. Okay. What would your younger self? not believe about your life today? Whoa, that I travel so much. Yeah, I remember, I remember when I was a kid, I was always thinking, hmm, how will be... To in, travel? Yeah, I was thinking in places, countries, uh, and how would be my life when I was 20, 30, things like that. Mm. It was difficult to imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. But I, I know if I tell myself, you will travel and learn many things traveling. You will be shocked that you did this much traveling. <laughs> and, and the other thing would be the many times that I start my life from scratch. That's right, that, that's pretty to amazing. To reinvent myself. In different moments. Yeah, because you started in Colombia, then you were in Prague, Czech Republic a little bit, mm -hmm. then Spain, Spain, and now America, New Jersey, whatever. And the different things that I did in my that I did in my life, like working in the banks, in Coca-Cola, uh, being a waiter, being a DJ, a personal trainer, um, martial art teacher, um, physical therapist, psych psychological therapist photographer, dance teacher. <laughs> yeah, the list is long. So you would never one. imagine when you were little that you would end up reinventing yourself so many times yep. and trying different things. What would you say it takes to have the courage to try different things? Because not everybody can, you know, do new things. They'll be like, oh, I only know a, and I'm just gonna stick with A. Like, how do you have the courage to explore something different? The funny thing is that mm -hmm. I never thought that I have courage. Oh, really? <laughs> you wouldn't describe yourself like that. <laughs> I don't describe myself like that, never. Hmm. I have to be completely honest, no. But my wife, <laughs> my wife says that. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I would say that you are. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'm stubborn. <laughs> okay. But I have an idea. Okay. Is the I want to to do the things that I like. That's the key. I I want to do it. Uh, I, I want to dance. Well, I go to dance. Uh, I want to read books. I go to read books. Uh, the thing is, that I have the capacity to move. I'm, I'm very wood, mm, yeah? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this is movement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I always learn some things, different things, and I feel bored quickly. Mm -hmm. I go to the other one, mm -hmm. and learn this one, and I have the capacity to relate these things. Yeah, you're really good at that. <laughs> I just relate the things, the music with therapies, with photography, and with personal training, all the things. They have relation, and I can use the principles of this in this other one. Uh, I can do it. This is a very good tool for me. And when I want to learn something, I try to emerge and spend time there. It's more than courage, it's like decision. It's because if you have a desire to do yeah, what you I, enjoy. I, I have desire, and I made that decision, and I go. 
And you make the decision. Yeah, you're like, I'm going to make this happen. Yeah. Whatever the steps are, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I remember um, we did martial arts. I want to learn these martial arts and I want, I want to, to know these guys. Um, uh, Colonel in Russia. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I just picked the phone. I called him. And one week later, I was flying there to learn. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. I don't know if it's courage or stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you will call yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's the second one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this kind of ties into it. What is the coolest and most unique or important skill that you have learned from your job? I guess from all your jobs. <laughs> Communication. Oh. Is the most important skill that you could have. And still I have some problems with that. <laughs> right, right. It's an ongoing process. Yeah. <laughs> but... Um, when you can communicate with different kinds of people, makes your job easier and more interesting. Because you learn more and you can offer, you can serve people. Because at the end, the most important thing for me in my work is to serve. Give them, give to the people a good experience. And I can do that because of communication. And communication is not just what I show, what I said, is what I could understand too. Communication is two ways. Yeah? If I could understand them, say, ah, oh, they need this from me, I could offer. Okay, perfect. This is a communication. Oh. And sometimes I don't need to talk. I think this is Really That's good. a very good skill. That's a very good skill, which I feel like it kind of happens with the journey that you had because you've been dealing with so many different people, so many different personalities. You catch on on mm -hmm. like how to speak to different people differently, how to listen, how to understand people differently. Yep. That's amazing. Okay. So the final question is the same question I always ask at the end, everybody, is if you could have one um, rule that everybody in the world had to follow, what would it be? Rules. Wow. I mean, it doesn't have to be a rule, just like a, an, uh, a suggestion for everybody what they should be doing. What would you like everybody to see, to do? Hi. <sighs> will sound cheesy. Uh -huh. But will be treat others with love. Yes, I get that a lot. A lot of them say kindness, love, yes, yes. If you treat other people with love, they everybody will feel good. Everything will be very, very different. You work with love. What else? <laughs> it will be perfect. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, is there anything, uh, thank you for sharing, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you would like to talk about before we end our awesome conversation? <laughs> <laughs> this was so much fun for me. I loved it. Yeah, it was such Great. an amazing journey. I'm, I'm so many so different happy. steps. <laughs> it's a lot of different steps. Is there anything that we um, didn't mention or we're good? I don't know if I mentioned uh, communication. I don't know. <laughs> To be clear. <laughs> I think we definitely mentioned that one. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that we we talk about many we things. We talk about so many much. things. It's been Very amazing. Yeah, it was interesting. I enjoyed the conversation a lot. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for this time. It was wonderful. Oh, it was you. interesting. And I don't know. I feel so good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Me too. Me too. Okay. So where can people find you? Do you have like a, a website? Do you have Instagram? How can they find you if they want to book photography <laughs> with one of the most amazing photographers in New York City, New Jersey? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Where can they find you? <laughs> well, I have my webpage. It's there. Um, FabianMolanoPhotography.com. Okay. And Instagram. 
you could find me like Fabian Molano dot NYC. Mm -hmm. We will link it at the description. Perfect. Okay. Basically, basically that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This was You're amazing. Welcome. I feel like we need to go home. Thank you. <laughs> This was I'm awesome. so happy. It was, it was really amazing. good. It was amazing. I hope that we can we can have the opportunity to talk again. That so would be awesome. Part two. <laughs> yeah, we can have part two. Part two would be awesome. <laughs> maybe you and your wife one day. <laughs> <laughs> deal. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Deal. We'll do it. We got it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay.